Hello and welcome to Twickenham. My goodness, what a last couple of hours we've had. We were expecting to bring you coverage of the men's barbarians against Samoa. That match is now off because of six cases of COVID in the barbarians camp. The good news is, though, that the women's barbarians against South Africa has been brought forward. It was always going to be shown on BBC and we will bring, bring you that one from 2.30. I think we've all in the last 18 months, two years, learned how to be pretty adaptable. And it's good news, I've got three guys alongside me who are going to have to do that this afternoon. We have former international from Samoa, Michael Maga, a former England captain, and Dylan Hartley, and British and Irish Lions and Wales legend, Jonathan Davis. Uh, gents, my goodness, where to start with this one? Uh, Dylan, you would like to have thought that lessons would have been learned from the, by the barbarians from last year, but six cases of COVID match off. Um, I'm going to sound like Mrs. Hartley here, my mother, actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. And that, that, that hits, you know. I, I think Samoa have done everything. They've upheld their end of the bargain. They've almost picked a second or third string team to field a team today. Um, we, we know the sort of struggles that the Pacific Island nations face. And to be here at Twickenham, holding up their end of the bargain, and unfortunately the, the Barbars, one week in London, can't field a team. So, um, it's, yeah, I agree. We, we're done. It's... You know, for the Barbarians, this is a shambles. Another shambles on the back of last year. You know, it's it's a great club with fantastic tradition. You know, I love playing for them, and part of it is the social side of it. But it, these days, you have to curb that. And the important thing was to be there today. And as as they've said, it means so much to the Samoans. You know, to come here, play in this stage. Some of them playing their last games. And represent, you know, this is the, an opportunity for them to show what they can do and promote their country. It's it's very very sad for them and disappointing for the barbarians. Yeah, absolutely. And just to put it into context, last year uh, some of the barbarians players broke the COVID bubble, so the match was off. We don't actually know what restrictions were in place, if they had any restrictions at all. But they were certainly out and about in London this weekend. And Mike, from a Samoan point of view. Um, your country, it's a nation starved of international rugby. They were desperate for this fixture. 100%. Those, uh, those guys you know, would have been uh, called by the union, by uh, the coach, uh, to answer a, a call of uh, desperation just to represent their, their country, uh, to which they answered. You know, and everyone, one of them, would have been really, really, really excited and proud to you know, put on the money jersey and uh, just really disappointed for them and, uh, you know, a Samoan talisman like uh, Joe DeCorey to miss out on that, that last opportunity. But as he said, you know, it is what it is and, you know, we move on. Yeah, and the players actually did come to Twickenham and have been out on the pitch. They all came in their team kit, went into changing rooms, had their meetings, very, very emotional when they finally got out onto the pitch. But they wanted to honour the fans who have made it to Twickenham today who are really looking forward to this match and they came out onto the pitch to sing their national anthem. Just when you thought that things couldn't get any more emotional, the Samoans took to the field for their cultural challenge.
and Mike, the Samoans went right round this pitch. Anytime they saw Samoans in the crowd, they performed the cultural challenge again. It meant so much to them. Yeah, I've um, uh, just been uh, caught up there um, emotionally. Yeah. Um, always been good, uh, big performers, uh, our Samoans. So um, for them to be on this stage, you know, they were going to make the most of of every minute so I'm really happy for them that they got out uh, and uh, got amongst the crowd but uh, just a pity that yeah, they couldn't take uh, the field for, for 80 minutes. Uh, Dylan alluded to it, they have made an awful lot of sacrifices to get uh, a team together for this. A lot of these players were actually based in France and it wasn't just a, a sort of second string team, there were some big names out there hoping to play their last game for their country performance style. One of those players was the Champions Cup winner from Toulouse, Joe Takori. He spoke to Sonia McLaughlin. Joe, can you just give us a sense of the emotions at the moment? That was a lovely touch to do your cultural challenge. Uh, first of all, um First of all, sorry for for the game today. Um, uh, just we cut it and um, It's all right, Joe. I understand this has come as a real crushing disappointment for all of the Samoan players. When did you first hear that this game wasn't going to happen today? Um, we had an awesome week with my Usos, my brothers uh, in Samoan Sai. And apparently we're just walking uh, inside the stadium. We already put our... Uh, ready for the game and... Uh, our coach, our minutes man, uh, came into the changing room. I'm sorry, boys, the game's got cancelled. And um, the, the room is went quiet, and uh, uh, I can't say anything. All the boys, they were waiting for me to say anything. I know it's my last game for my my country, and uh, it's an end for me. I, I don't want to end like this, but it's more important. I want. Uh, all well, those Samoan young, Samoan potential, a lot of potential for the Samoan team to carry on uh, this month Samoa means to all our country and all the Samoa around the world. But for me, it's my last one and um, I'll finish like this, but this is, it's okay for me. How much did it mean to you to come out here and, and to wear your jersey and to do the cultural challenge and to leave with some sense of a, a high it's mean a lot to us this is uh, for our family we had a emotion moment last night with all our families video be saying from Samoa and all our families here come all the way from uh, Australia uh, America and us from France but it's a uh, thank you for for all our families be here for today but sorry for this no game but I'm Today we were ready to, to rumble and everyone was, uh, all my Usos uh, and my brothers from Samoan team were ready to go, but it is, it is. Yeah. I'm so sorry because I can know how emotional you are and uh, I'm very grateful to you to having a quick chat with us. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. God bless. My goodness, it has been so emotional. I think that if you didn't arrive here as a Samoa fan, you'll certainly be leaving here as a Samoa fan. Uh, Mike is pretty emotional. Dylan, you were too watching Joe there. I mean, I think because it's fresh in the memory that I retired a few years ago. I mean, he's continuing to play, but to, to play his 50th test today and, and bow out in that style would have been lovely for him. But um, no, no one, every player that I've played with plays for their family. But I think the Samoan boys, the ones that I know, they kind of epitomise playing for their family, their country, uh, their faith. All these things are so important to them. And as the game gets more commercialised and refined, these guys kind of embody those rugby values, which is why it's so sad not to see him get that game today, that shot. Um, 
So yeah, you can see he's, he's gutted. He is the king of hospitality as well. I've had a few nights out in France and uh, I've always been under control, but he's got a few of my teammates home. He's a very good man. And he still doesn't have COVID, so he is the king. No, no. Um, let's talk about something, because actually Joe alluded to it, because his time as a Samoan player is over. Um, but there was some really big news from World Rugby, the governing body this week, about the changes to birth rule rights. So basically what it means is that players will be allowed to represent a different nation if, uh, if they want to choose. They will not have been allowed to have played international rugby for three years previous to that. And they have to be eligible through an ancestor. It's not just a pick and mix of a, of a global map. Um, it's a really interesting one. This is very uh, important to the Pacific nations, isn't it, Mike? It's something yeah. that they have been fighting hard for. Do you approve of this, that players who may have represented the All Blacks or in England or someone could then turn up again for Samoa? Yes. Um, I, I, this week's been a, a massive week uh, for Pacific Island rugby. Um, just haven't been able to cap it off today, but you know Wednesday uh, was uh, is epic. Um, the amount of messages we were getting from uh, former players, uh, current players, uh, just looking forward, you know, to being able to get back on the international stage. You know, some of these guys uh, will be ready to go in January. Uh, you know, Tonga are, at this moment in time uh, stand to be the biggest winners. Uh, with some of those you know, former Australian and uh, New Zealand internationals uh, who haven't been in, you know, uh, on the international stage for three years, three, some of them four years. Uh, so, yeah, just really looking forward to, um, you know, the next World Cup, uh, the next internationals that will be happening in July uh, for the Pacific Islanders. But uh, hopefully we can um, also, you know, all the unions can build on, yeah. on this kind of momentum. Um, so that you know the, the Pacific Islanders uh, teams are, are stronger, f you know, for longer. I think it's I think it's massive. If you look at the South Pacific Islands and look at the the contribution they have made to Australian and New Zealand rugby, and the strength and depth in New Zealand. So sometimes, you know, Casey Lalawa, um, yeah. you know, who's playing for cup, one cup, all of a sudden yeah. he's not good enough. He could have played for any other international side. You know, Wales were chasing him. So the impact that this will have, it will really, really spice up the World Cup. Because I think Wales are playing in the, in, with Fiji. I think England got Tonga, I think. Uh, uh, England have Samoa. Oh, Samoa, yeah. and then yeah. I think Scotland have got Tonga. And the players... Still after, the, no, I know, but I think it's going to affect... We have, we, yeah, we've been burned before by the Fijians in the World Cup. But the impact that it had on Rugby League. Yeah. Tonga got to the semi-final of the World Cup last year and they were a special, special side to watch. So this is a huge, huge impact on South Pacific side. It'd be brilliant. And Mike, you've actually had this within your own family as well. You know, you ended up yes. playing against your brother when he was uh, captaining the All Blacks, Tana. You have it with your son, Jacob. You, yep. of course, played for Samoa. So you, you've seen how, maybe not divisive it can be for a family, but how it affects families. No, I, I think, um, you know, the way we looked at it is, uh, that, you know, it's international rugby, and, and every rugby player wants to do that. You know, they want to play to the best level they possibly can. Um, but um, you know, we we uh, are proud Samoans as well as uh, proud Kiwis. Um, but you know, we now have an opportunity with with Jacob, um, who's had one cap for England, and you never know. You know, in another two and a half years, he, he could be eligible. You've uh, probably just got about another year in Union. You can play for the All Blacks. <laughs> You're talking about family dynamics. I never got a, a good luck message ever from my Kiwi family. So <laughs> not, not even my own family like me. But um, to, well, to well play, done. I was going to say, to play devil's advocate, and I'm, I'm a big supporter of, of this going through, but it, it needs to be a long-term solution because I suppose the... The, the dream is still there for, for tier one nations to come in and, and take these players. And I suppose we want it to be aspirational to play for Samoa, to play for Tonga from the off, not chasing England and all black and Irish or Scotland dream. And then three years later, when you haven't really got that run, to then go back. So I think short term, to make them genuine competitors at, at global tournaments um, and, and touring, it's a really good thing because I was speaking to you off camera there, Mike. If we can get these teams in the next eight to 10 years, being genuine contenders and challengers, maybe little kids when they're growing up aren't going to go, oh, I'm going to go down to New Zealand and play, I'm going to go to France, but I'm going to stay here. So World Rugby, I know they're doing great things with the, the super competition, 
they need infrastructure there. They need to kind of home grow it and keep it there for it, for it to last. Otherwise, we're just putting a plaster over but, it. But I think this decision might help because when yeah. kids growing up and see, oh, hang on, they can see Israel Falau playing now. You know, then they can see Charles Pieter coming back and playing. All of a sudden, they'd be thinking, you know, with those kind of players wanting to play for their country, it's not about chasing the buck. It's just about right. I want to focus, and the buck will come anyway. Yeah. So it's just representing because I, you know, I never wanted to play for any other country. You know, I just wanted to play for Wales. But I, you know, I wasn't in the position that a lot of the Samoans and Tongans and Fijians had been, where we had the choice. Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly interesting. Let's hope it's positive going forward. One thing is for sure, though, that we will have teams coming out onto the pitch behind us for their anthems. It, just to remind you, it is the women's barbarians against South Africa. So if we take a look at the women's teams, we have some big names in the barbarians side, which is headed up by England's Mo Hunt and uh, some other players as well who, just like the men's today, will be playing their uh, last matches for the Barbarians. And we can see we've got plenty of different nationalities, seven different nationalities today. Mo Hunt leads the way from nine. Uh, Rocky Clark is there from England as well, as is Katie Daly McLean, who will be taking part in her last performance on a rugby pitch before she retires. They're coached by Jo Yap, who you might know from Wasps, and earlier on she spoke to Sonia. Well, Joe, give us an insight into your morning then. When did the phone start going off? Uh, yeah, the phone started off go, uh, going off early doors, but uh, we didn't really get confirmation until pretty late on, so it's been a little bit of a, a crazy time for us, to be honest. Not the ideal build-up. <laughs> Your eyebrows said everything. How have the players reacted to it all? Uh, like they've they've reacted unbelievably well. Like they're so they're so adaptable. They're a great bunch. And as of the staff, like we can only control what we can control. And ultimately, we just needed to to focus on us and um, yeah, and just wait wait for those final calls. Really, it's the second year in a row actually the men's game has been cancelled. Do you feel a little bit like you're flying the flag for the barbarians here now? Oh, yeah, it's a difficult one for the men, isn't it? But, yeah, ultimately, we're the ones taking the field today and, and the girls are proud of that. And um, they're really hoping that they can put on a really good spectacle for the people that are here. Yeah. A little word about Katie Daly-McLean bringing the curtain down on her illustrious career. Are there a few emotions flying around as yeah, well? Yeah, it's been a really emotional week, actually. Like, we, we've had an amazing time as a group. And, and on Wednesday evening, we shared, like, stories and journeys of how the players have got to where they are. And that was really emotional and, and, and amazing and hugely privileged to listen to that. And, and Katie being one of those players. So for her to have that opportunity to run out here today is, is fantastic. She's such a great player. She's been a great leader all week. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to see her run out. And what are you expecting from these women's spring box? Oh, uh, like having having watched them, they're a really physical side that never say die. So you know we know they're going to throw everything at us, but we're excited for the challenge. Good luck. Thank you. Well, Dylan, you and I were both covering the Women's Autumn Internationals. The crowds have been phenomenal, but this is a really big day for women's rugby. They didn't expect to be on now, not just on BBC, but in front of all these fans. What, what an opportunity. The, the last few weeks we've had 10,000, 10,000. Exeter, Northampton, the Stoop, Worcester doing a great job. And with a bit of uh, ambush marketing, they're going to get more than 10,000 today. <laughs> so it's a great advert. And I'll tell you what, 2025, England are going to make a bid for that Home World Cup. Yeah. And the, the challenge is to sell this place out for the final. So today is going to be a good test run for them. Well, the person who's been sitting alongside you in the commentary box for the last four weeks is actually the captain of the Barbarians today. Mo Hunt was speaking to Sonia. So Mo, when did you find out that you needed to get a wiggle on and get to Twickenham? So we had um, a bit of a meeting at half past ten, but nothing was confirmed until uh, I think we finally found out about ten past twelve. So obviously it was all hands on deck trying to organise how we get here and all that sort of stuff. But to be honest, like the girls are pretty chill about it. We're in the change rooms now, music's going and it's just match day as normal. So. So How did you get here, Mo? <laughs> Honestly, in an Uber. So in the meeting, it was all, anyone that lives in England do have an Uber account, like, and everyone was on their phones trying to order it. So it's a bit of carnage, but um, fair play to our manager, Stocker. She got us here in time. It is hard enough to blend a team when you in a very short <laughs> period of time. Any concern that this slightly strange build-up might just affect your game today? If anything, I think it's brought us together because there's no time to think about anything. Um, the girls are great crack. Like There was Rona just singing and dancing around while people were trying to organise what taxis they were in. So, no, like the girls have been amazing. It's been an unbelievable week. Like You can hear the crowd already with Samoa going round. It's, it's going to be an unbelievable atmosphere and we're just so excited to get out there now. It's going to be on BBC One. You could now have a record crowd for a women's game. 
What sort of opportunity is this? Oh, it's huge. Uh, honestly, it's it's kind of like the stars of a line for us, obviously, off the back of the autumn campaign that England, the Red Roses have just had and all the other nations have had. And we've now got an opportunity to showcase what we do with a little bit of flair as well. And everyone watches women's rugby. They always say how much they love it and they never really realise what kind of brand we play. So we just hope that we can do the Barbarians badge proud today. We hope that everyone that's uh, come to Twickenham enjoys what we're about as well, because we're going to try and play with the same flair and style that the guys do as well. And fingers crossed we can put a showcase on. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, just such a great attitude from Mo there. Um, it hasn't been the easiest day. Everyone was getting taxis. The South Africans had to get taxis here as well today. <laughs> but it is just the sort of the, the nature of it. You know Mo well. She is a great leader. I was going to say taxis. I'm more of a, a black cab man. Shout out to all the London cabbies out there. <laughs> Love them. They, oh, they, they know the ways. You're um, dressing like one. Um, thank you. <laughs> he talks like one as well, no? <laughs> well... Oh, Mo, love Mo. And I know Mo's still got aspirations to play for England. Um, she's got two great players in front of her at the moment. But this is a sort of game where she can showcase what she's about. So, yeah, as an advert, big crowd, big occasion. And in true Barbar's fashion, I suppose time constraints don't really matter when you're in the Barbar's. You, know, you just turn up when you want and throw the ball around. With... Like, like Mo said, what an opportunity. You know, it's the first game's cancelled of the men's. No, this is a stage. And she said there, they are coming out to play. When they play, you know, for their national sides or their club sides, they're slightly structured and rigid. No. What an opportunity for women's rugby to showcase a Barbarians game against South Africa. Well, this is a wonderful opportunity for them. We are set for a real treat. So sit back and enjoy this one in the company of Brian Moore, Emily Scarrett and first Sarah Orchard. A very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Twickenham for another slice of rugby history. Yes, it's a chilly one, but we are ready to go. Here comes South Africa. They're led out by their captain, Cindy Bowie. They've been on tour here in Europe since the start of November, playing the likes of France and Wales, as they, of course, build towards the World Cup in New Zealand next year. Half of the team did manage to arrive in plenty of time, but the other half, they did struggle a little bit. So they have had just about enough time to warm up and they're just lining up now for the anthems. Well, this is, of course, only the fifth time that the women's bar bars have actually played a fixture. It is the first time they've actually hosted a game. The last time that we got to see them in action was back in November 2019. That was at the Principality Stadium. A big win for them against a Wales 15. So South Africa lined up and ready to go. Wonderful to see so many staying here at Twickenham. They want to watch their rugby today. Here come the Barbarians women. You've heard them whooping, you've heard them hollering. There's been plenty of dancing this week. And they're out onto the Twickenham pitch, led out by England's scrum half and Gloucester Harbury skipper Natasha Hunt. You'll hear her also referred to as Mo, and a real moment and honor for the 55 times capped Red Rose. So many smiles there from the Barbars. Both sides and the crowd will now make their stand against racism in any form. There is no place for it in rugby, in sport or anywhere. Thank you for your support to make it clear rugby really is for everybody. Well, we'll now have the anthem starting with the national anthem of South Africa. Please, please, please. 
Save the Queen to respect the home country where they are playing. to be watching rugby at Twickenham this afternoon. Let's take a look then at this Barbarians women's side named by the head coach, Joe Yap. In the forwards, we get to see the outgoing Ireland skipper, Kieran Griffin. She pulls on her international boots for the last time. She's been named vice-captain today. Meanwhile, fresh from her 50th cap for Canada, Laura Russell is there at hooker. In the backs, the Ireland duo of Sene Naupu and Jenny Murphy make up a formidable centre partnership. And while England's Natasha Hunt captain's wearing nine, her fellow 2014 World Cup winner Katie Daly-McLean is outside her at ten, and this will be her last ever game of rugby. Moving on to South Africa, they're forced into six changes from the side that lost to Wales two weeks ago. Coach Stanley Rubenheimer brings in the Blue Bulls' Katha Jacobs into the back row, while Mickey Hunter and Asantil Noyanto are brought into the front row. In the backs, the up-and-coming 21-year-old Unum Tose from Border Ladies wears nine. Keep an eye on the boot of Yaki Sillas wearing 13. She learnt her kicking trade from her neighbour back home in South Africa, just the two-time Men's World Cup winner, Francois Stey. Is Natasha Hunt. She really has been the heartbeat of this barbarian side in the build up to this game. As we mentioned in the build up, of course, she's very keen to get back into an England shirt, but there is 2014 World Cup winner and the England captain on the day that they lifted the trophy. Katie Daly McLean will get us underway. Our referee is Clara Munarini of Italy. Twickenham is ready, the Barbarians women are ready, and the Springbok women get ready to receive the ball out on the far side of the field. Ball, 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 ball. 
huge hits going in there. Play on. Big counter at the Barbarians here to play early doors at Twickenham. Use it. There's stop, Jordan stop. who clears the ball down the field for South Africa. There'll be a lot of pressure on her today as one of the more experienced players in this South Africa squad. And Natasha Hunt goes quickly. This is what she does. Popped off ball straight away to the USA's Hope Rogers. Did well to control that. Backwards. Oh, you wanted bar bars rugby. That's what you're getting. Use it. Russell. Pete. Murphy. No hands. No hands. Rock form. Hunt deciding on this occasion not to go quickly and time for us to say good afternoon to Emily Scarrett and first of all, Brian Moore. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, you can see Katie Daly McLean there and one of the things with Barbarian sides is you want some sort of continuity because they're a scratch side and they've only had a certain amount of preparation but when you've got halfbacks that have played together so many times for England then that's a real positive for them. Well, the Barbarians women have actually only had four sessions out on the pitch this week. So it'll be interesting to see what they can pull together from these set pieces. Taken on straight away by Anna Capeless. Ireland woman has ten caps in the green jersey, but here's an opportunity for South Africa to get rid of all of that pressure. Unfortunately, therefore, the Barbarians, it was set up. It was there, they just couldn't get enough players there in to the breakdown to win the ball. And that's another thing, when you're playing national sides, everyone knows where they're going. There was Anna Capeless there, just getting out of the way of this line out. Hunter gets it in. Play on. Happy that to play on, Tose with the distribution. And they decide to go right down the middle there through Dunkit. Laser rugby for Border Ladies back in South Africa. Border Ladies, the winners of the recent women's Premier Division title. Take him back. Stop. Running across the field, here comes Maya Tayatoga of the USA. Popped up, well, Capeless is everywhere at the moment. Hunt. Murphy with a little bit of a grubber through. Mabenge having to try and deal with it. Tosa. Daly McLean. Well, if this is the last time she puts these boots on, enjoy it. Pete. Kate Bliss can't take. And South Africa try and snaffle that one. Oh, it's breathless, isn't it? Katie Daly McLean, like you said, her last, her last outing on the turf, and what an occasion this is for her. Um, she'll be shown and going all day long whenever she's got the option to. She's such a fantastic footballer. Any little bit of space, any manipulation of space that she can find, she'll definitely be taking it. Great, great couple of touches of her, great couple of touches for Hope Rogers as well. She's been really, really strong. Katie Daly McLean, no doubt, has a very proud family watching on at home. Her daughter, still a, a real youngster, but no doubt very proud of everything her mum has achieved. Collected at the base then for the South Africans. Tose. Sillers. Ah, oh, happy and waiting. Here comes Mattia Toga again. Hunt wants the ball. Eventually she gets it, and we get to see the Frenchwoman Corson. 
Now 32 years old, as this is a, a Daly McLean special crossfield kick, but read well by South Africa. They'll know, they'll watch enough rugby, that that is exactly what the fly half does. Namba there did really well to bring that back. That's a complete misread, and this is huge pressure now, piling down on the South Africans who've had to take that over their own line. Shame for South Africa because they recovered very, very well there. And the danger until that bad pass had actually gone away. Superb bit of work here. I don't think Jordan will be particularly appreciative of that ball that she got in her dead ball area there, but fantastic kick by Katie. That's what she'll be looking to do. She probably won't be looking for those, those big wipering kicks we've seen all career, but it'll be those little intricate ones for her wingers to run onto. Well, that bar bar scrum is moving. Pressure on Kate Bliss to secure. They've got the advantage as well. There's another bomb there from Katie Daly McLean, taken clearly in the corner. And it's going to be Levy that touches down. And the bar bars are on the scoreboard. Only six and a half minutes played. And it's the USA, Sarah Levy, the California woman, who gets them off the mark. Oh, it's on an absolute string for Katie Daly McLean, isn't it? What a fantastic touch from her. Great take as well, completely unopposed, but you've, you've still got to take it under that pressure. Fantastic kick from Katie Daly McLean. She's, she's set her intention, moved away really well by Natasha Hunt. So much space out there. <laughs> Levy doesn't even have to move, does she? It's straight into the breadbasket. So also fantastic. give credit to the referee there. She could have easily blown up for a penalty, waited until they had the opportunity, and of course they converted that, so credit to her there. She's had the bar bars memo, hasn't she? Worth mentioning that Sarah Levy's grandfather actually camped the bar bars against the Springboks men again back in 1939. Whoa, what a kick there. Oh, she's going to go out in style. I'll tell you what would be nice for some of the barbarians. We've seen over the last few weeks England hammering the USA and Canada. And we know that Canada and the USA have got good players, and those players are in this side, and now they're competing on a better, more equal footing, and they are really enjoying that. Yeah, it's a fantastic opportunity for, for people who would never play together to play together. Um, and like you say, some people have had tough autumns, and this is a brilliant way to bow out. Jordan then gets us back underway. Vice captain for the Springbok women this afternoon. Oh. A little bit of a miscommunication and chaos there. So this will be the first time we really get to see the South Africans get a bit of decent platform ball inside of the Barbarians' half. We certainly need to do better than the last two scrums. They've been under pressure. Very important that they get the ball away quickly because they are under that pressure. This is the fourth match on tour for the South African women. There is the coaching staff. Stanley Rubenheimer there watching on, and Solonsi has to really pick up that ball from around her ankles going backwards. Not easy. A warnings against the Barbars there. A little too excited as Tose goes. Jordan has to go in and play scrum half. A little bit of a show there by Dunker. Again, there's no fly half back there, so Tose just looking up at her options on either side. It's going to be the captain, Bowie. Looking for work, there comes Webb. Plays her rugby for the ball on dams. Latcher doesn't fancy going herself. Oh, we all felt that one. We heard it too. Wonderful run round the corner there as Sillers can't find any space in that defensive line. Tose back towards the near side. Namba. Oh, 
wonderful handoff. Just beginning to build up a bit of a head of steam, the South Africans. Latcha. Big things expected of the Western Province prop. 27 years old, she's got 11 caps. There we go, Solonsi's arrived. She's here at Twickenham. Use it. Barbars have got themselves out of a tricky spot there as uh, the Canadian Russell taking a fall. Course on now, Washington. Stay on. Hunt puts up the box kick. Read really nicely, you have to say, by Namba. There's Jordan back inside to Webb. It'd be a real fillet if the South Africans can do something with this, but not to be. Give away the penalty and the Barbars get a chance to breathe. She's gone. Natasha Hunt's gone. She will be doing that all day. She does it in the normal league. She does it when she's obviously played for England as well. So she's definitely going to be doing it for this Barbarian side. Always looking. Every time there's a penalty or free kick, she'll be looking to get her hands on that ball and go. Well, that was Arlen's Kira Griffin just having a word there with our referee, Clara Munnery. Well, the problem with the South Africans are in the moment. They've got to get the balance right between getting enough players in to win the ball and win it quickly without committing too many players. Do it one way or the other and you get it wrong and then you don't have enough players to carry the ball or the ball gets slow and then it's unusable. Strong line-out throwing there by Canada's Laura Russell and this is... A nice rolling ball too. Crowd like it. Hunt manages to find Murphy. Still going there through Sene Nopu. She took a clattering. Rear line once again. Three advantage, number five. Five. You're good, you're good. Number Hunt five. thought about going then, just stopped herself. She must be tired already. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. She's not long back from the Tokyo Olympics, of course, and she was talking about the transition from sevens to fifteens. The fitness is very different, but she still has got it. Oh, she definitely has. She's a good friend of mine, so I can say that. But, yeah, she'll be look looking to go every single time. Love the look of this. Oh, here's a Barbar special for you. It's a quarterback. It's NFL. No, it's the Barbars. I tell you what, Namba doesn't like it. Hunt. I wonder how many other tricks like that we're going to see from the Barbars women this afternoon. Hunt to Washington. Great run through by Paquin. Canadian flanker who's been there and pretty much done everything there is to do in rugby union. Pete. Daly McLean out to the far side. Mataya Toga. Back, man! Little snipe round the side. Popped up for Katie Daly McLean as she finished it off. Try given. It's a day that just gets more special. Katie Daly McLean, she got 116 caps in an England shirt. Enjoying her afternoon. Right, I think they need to sum her off now. She's got a try, she's got a conversion, she's made a break. That should be her if they need that. No, oh, look, it's brilliant to see Katie out there enjoying herself. You saw the support that she got from the rest of that team. A lot of people that she's, you know, won't have come across a huge amount out on the wing, still got the feet, still got the acceleration. Fantastic finish in the end. Again, all come from, comes from Natasha Hunt, just spotting that little potential 2v1 down the blind side. Katie McLean, fantastic finish from her on what's hopefully going to be a, a fantastic afternoon. Well, it was a 2v1, but she still had quite a lot to do when she stepped inside and managed to do it. And for those of you who haven't watched a lot of women's rugby, if you doubted the physical commitment that's on display, you can't do that anymore because the hits are really going in. did notice that Katie Daly McLean she wasn't keen on scoring that out wide because she knew she had to try and turn this one in from the conversion oh just short one from two so far this afternoon 
How much do you think she'll be focusing on her kicking this afternoon? Do you think she'll care, Emily Scarrett? Oh, she'll always care. She's, uh, you know, a professional right to the end. This is the Barbar's move that hopefully we'll see a few more of those. That's probably why Natasha didn't go quickly, wasn't it? Because she wanted to, <laughs> to pull some of those tricks out the bag. But yeah, look, Katie is an incredibly proud individual. She's worked incredibly hard over the years and, and she'll want to go out, you know, really showcasing what she's able to do. And Brian, the Barbarians, they are all about fun. And when we see little moves like that, that's what it's about. Well, this is what you don't see in professional rugby or the high, you know, because it's, it's seen as too serious. So it, obviously things like that just bring an extra element to this. And the, the important thing for the Barbarians is with the lack of preparation time, they may as well go out and give it a blast. Because if they try to play in a conventional way with the conventional number of set moves, it just won't work. A lot of pressure, but South Africa just feeling to stand up to that. Oh, she wants it, she's got it. Natasha Hunt is off. The 32-year-old, can she get the whole way? Just five metres short. She's got support, they want it quickly, passed out wide. Corson! Hunt snatched it. The French woman Corson finished it. They suck up a bit of oxygen. The Barbarians are looking absolutely on tip-top form at Twickenham. Oh, she was hustling the whole time, Natasha Hunt, wasn't she? Straight from that scrum, pressure on the nine, pressure on the ten. Ball bobbled to her. Look at here, getting off the line, not giving anybody an easy ride, and then she's off to the races. Is it Sillers? I think there's a fantastic job of tracking her down. Brilliant tackle. Mo stays patient. It's a great effort from, from Number to try and turn that ball over and then right on top of it, Corson, very adept at playing sevens as well as 15, so she'll always be right up with play, brilliant finish. Going to be a long afternoon for South Africans if they can't steady this scrum because that's the third one in a row when they've been under pressure, not just a case of getting the ball away, but then it, it brings pressure out wide because the defensive back line has time to come up, then the passes go wrong, which is exactly what happened there. Katie Daly McLean is starting to get to know that far side of the pitch quite well. That one's good. Two from three. She's still got it, isn't she? She's still got it. I spoke to her the other day and I said, Oh, will you be goal kicking? She was, oh, I'm not sure. I've not really practiced in a while. Um, but I think she would have been. She'll have been out on the field. Awesome display from her so far. Lene Corson plays her rugby at Stade Francais. Now 32 years old, no doubt very keen to make sure she goes to that World Cup in New Zealand next year with France. Daly McLean. Now this is a chance for South Africa to get another little platform here. We should mention South Africa's women, they're currently ranked 13 in the world. They've got 19 women who've only just been given pro contracts. They're really starting to build. And, and you can tell with flashes at the moment, Brian, that South Africa, they really do have something special building, but it's not quite a whole package just yet. No, and of course, the, the influence and the time given by pro contracts will take at least a year to, to come through. But hopefully that will be enough for them to mount to see, you know, much better challenge when they get to the World Cup. Tose gets good support in there from Jacobs. Tose looks up. Jordan was there for the distribution to Nyanto. Last ball. It's Namba who's having to go back and deal with this little bit of a problem. Straight into Daly McLean, though. Offside in front. Bit unlucky there. I thought, was it a charge down or not? Certainly inadvertent, wasn't it? I was going to say the charge down. I'm not sure Katie Daly McLean was expecting it. So uh, it's the wonderful 10-metre rule in uh, rugby union comes into play. I think it is, it wasn't. 
machine uh, never tried to, but it was just a case, yeah. Well, there you go, that's the referee uh, just confirming that. She didn't actually try uh, to charge it down, therefore it is not a charge down. Yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because I'm not sure Ronan Lloyd can do much much different about that because it falls into her hand, but... Just not quite brilliant execution there from South Africa. Means that they end up losing the ball. This is their fourth game on tour. They did have a, a good Let's run go. out last weekend. They played the England under-20s where they beat them at 38 points to five. And that it was a real a, 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 a bonus match for them. It was organised by uh, one of the England coaches, Amy Turner, who's on the main coaching staff and also on the under-20s. 20 20s coach and it just really gave them that little bit of a platform to build yeah huge huge for them you know you, you come across to England and, and the UK for a, a, a tour like this uh, played France as well haven't they so it, it's so invaluable you take all the opportunities that you're given and um, they brought a, a big squad to give everybody a run Van Rensburg not in the squad today but she was brilliant last week actually yeah Libby Jan Young Van Rensburg she's actually picked up an injury but you've got a breakaway here by Rona Lloyd the Scots woman Stunning stuff. Well, several players outside to pass to, so they'll be saying it's a good job you did go over. But look, when she saw space, and you can see the sevens talent there, backs herself. Simply too good. She thought about it, didn't she? But when, you, when you've got pace, pace like Rona Lloyd to burn, you have to back yourself. She's got the ball transfer, she's having a look, decides she can do it all herself. Fantastic score from her. First phase as well, love to see first phase tries. Rona Lloyd, the only Scotswoman playing today. Oh, they're having a great time. I'll have what they're having. She looks up at the big screen and can see the smile on her own face there as she runs back to the far side. A little bit of a dummy there we saw from Lloyd as well before she eventually touched down. Well, it's all been about the black and white hoops so far this afternoon at Twickenham. They only came together as a squad, of course, on Monday. Just the four coaching sessions, a little bit of crazy golf mixed in. But so far, they are rampant. Murphy just about managed to hold on to that one. Pete. 41 years old. Still showing off her stuff. Not taken cleanly there by South Africa. Did they touch it is the question. They did touch it, so that's a little bit of a bonus for the Barbars. Never touch. I really like this second row pairing of Washington and Corsong. Washington was, I thought she was exemplary in a losing, a big losing cause uh, for the USA. And Corsong is redolent of a lot of the French forwards, of a very powerful uh, pack, and that's just one demonstration of it. Well, that South African lineup really not functioning as uh, Hunter has to go down onto the floor. Morning. Leave it, leave it. I don't expect many penalty opportunities for the Barbars to even consider going for the post. It would just be whether they kick for the corner or do, or do another special move that they thought up this week. Katie Daly McLean kind of was, I could see her gesticulating to Mo then that I think they, they've obviously got something maybe off a, a driven mall or, or something off a line out in the 22 that perhaps they want to pull out the bag of tricks today. So hopefully we'll see something here. Russell. 
The fourth woman to get 50 caps for Canada lands down. Here comes Griffin, pops off the ball back to the Canadian. Oh, was that drop forward? Still going forward, then this time Rogers, the American woman. Nice steal there by Carway. Levy. Levy still going. She scored one. Would have been quite a way to travel to go on for her second. Hunt. Daly McLean, Washington. Caplice. Hunt again. Naopu. He's a tackle. Scram advantage. Yep, you're fine. Come back. Scrum advantage. Oh, they get to come back, and it'll be a bar bar scrum for them. Scrum advantage in the tackle. Well, this was the wonderful steal there by Carway, who plays a rugby at Western Province. Nice poach. It's a brilliant poach, especially off somebody of the caliber of Hope Rogers. Um, Brian spoke about Alicia Washington and how good she was in that USA v England game. Well, Hope Rogers, I reckon, was up there for one of the players of the matches in a, in a very, very tough game. So, yeah, a great steal from her. Find! Set! Oh, what a great snipe there by Tose. Oh, good, oh, good. Catching Natasha Hunt at the back there. We said she was a, a, a real spark. She's 21 years old, and she was part of that border ladies' side that uh, recently won the women's premier division down in South Africa. It's Caplice she got. Yeah. Great timing, isn't it? Great timing. You could see eyes focused. As soon as Caplice went to pick that ball up, she was straight on her. Really, really good turnover in a, in a great position as well. That looked threatening for the Barbars there. Crouch! Of course, for Tose, this is her first start this tour. Really good stuff, looking for the shoulders, trying not to go completely straight. Jordan. Wonderful defence by Naoku. Gathered there by Noyanto. A lot of hard work done there by Seni Naoku, but the penalty given away. If you're going to get a ball, there's a hospital pass. You don't want one above your head because it exposes all your ribs. At least give it in front of you so you get so you get cluttered when you can curl up. And, and Not have to extend your body and, and feel every single rib being clattered. And you don't want to look up and see Sunny Nahapu, the person who's about to line you up. She's a fierce, fierce defender. She'll come and hit through you all day long. Fantastic shot from her. Well, there's been a few problems for South Africa at this line-out so far today. That is a better effort from them. Nice little slid ball. Tose gets it back to Jordan. They go stop, to stop Sillers. Nine. Waiting out there is Mattia Toga. Runs straight there into Mabengue. Hunt. Rogers manages to find Paquin. Naopu again. She's got Washington there, who's running out of pitch out on that far side. South African captain there, Boy, she knew that. Backwards. Murphy there, she just tried to get that last tip away, couldn't quite, Pete has it. Goes out. Katie Daly McLean, she knew that she could find a bit of space down the field, and she does. Chasing on it is Mattia Toga as well. She's closing in on Webb. Not the best clearance come in, come in. for Webb. Hunt can't take it either. Oh, she knows it. We don't need to say any more than that.
comedy of errors. Big, big smile on her face there, isn't there? Yeah, not the best kick that Eloise Webb, Webb will have ever done in terms of clearing it. And then Natasha just bats of a rugby yeah, ball. She gambles, lifts yeah, yeah. to see her eyes, just pick up. Just there, takes her eyes off it, doesn't she? Just the last minute to see where she's going before she's got control. There you go, she's putting her arm up because she's looked up at the big screen she saw and knows. The big screen. Honestly. Ever the professional. Look at that bench there for the bar bars waiting to come on. Plenty of caps there. A few fresh faces as well. Uncapped players given their opportunity. We should say it is very cold here at Twick, and I think there is some cold fingers out there. And South Africa feeling the heat here. Far too close to their own line. Here comes the bar bars advantage. Out, and it's going to be over once again for Levy. She's got a double. And the Barbars party continues at Twickenham. Making the pay for this station. South Africa got to learn this. It's a very old rugby cliche, but it remains true. When, it, when you're in trouble, don't shovel bad ball backwards because it never, never gets any better. And it goes from bad to worse when you start with a bad scrum and then a ball goes back at the two or three times and all of a sudden you find yourself under the post like that with ballers turned over and a try ensues. Yeah, it's really simply executed in the end by, by the Barbarians, isn't it? I think Mabenge, you can see her flapping her arms on this right-hand side of the screen there. She knows she's short, she knows she's in trouble. Um, but it's just really simple skills in the end. I think South Africa just struggling a little bit, aren't they, with their basics? It's just some of that handling stuff that isn't sticking, means they've got to go backwards to recover the ball. So, you know, I'm sure that's something they'll be talking about under the post now, just to keep it simple and look after those basic skills. Well, South Africa, they have picked up quite a few injuries on this tour so far, so perhaps not their strongest 15 that they're playing out there today. But you have to say, they are coming up against a bar bar side that is just stacked full of star studded international talent. None less than the women you can see on your screen right now. Just slightly shank that one off to the right-hand side of the post. Emily Scarrett, you have done and you do do a lot of kicking in your time. If there's some young uh, boys or girls watching that, what's your best advice when you're lining up at sticks? Ooh. Um, stick to the process. It's such a boring answer. Nobody likes that answer, but you've got to stick to the process. Follow through, follow along the line. It's all about your body weight shift. And um, yeah, Katie, Katie knows all about that. She's very good at it. Well, the crowd are just working their way up towards a bit of a Mexican wave because they are having a, a fun time here at Twickenham this afternoon. Here comes Levy. Gathered by Capeless. No one there. Jacobs is, though. And they'll come back for the scrum. Worth mentioning, of course, that South Africa, when they go to the World Cup, they are in a group with England, Fiji and France when they head over there. But there's some big changes coming on here for South Africa very early on. They've got Guala and Charlie coming on. Also, Porto Rica. Big decisions for them early on. Well, they are big decisions, but to be fair to the South African management, they've seen the South African scrum struggle time after time and they are determined to try and do something about that whether they can remains to be seen but at least they've been proactive about it well the two front row players they have brought on they are a little bit more experienced than the women they've brought up Koala has got 12 South African caps. Charlie only on her third. Now we understand there's around 26,000 
fans who've actually come through the turnstiles. Of course, they were expecting to be watching first up the men's Barbarians match against Samoa. The referee's going to bring this back. Namba thinks she's going to have scored, but unfortunately, the referee has blown a whistle for a knock-on and they'll have to come back for a scrum. Well, as I was saying there, 26,000 expecting to watch the men's bar bars match. And if you've tuned in on BBC One and that's what you're expecting, unfortunately, four of the men's bar bars players and two members of staff uh, did test positive for COVID. So they brought forward the women's bar bars match that we're enjoying now. It's unlucky, isn't it, from number? She gets really high in that defensive line, puts loads of pressure on. It's one of those where either she scores or Levy scores because she was also through a fantastic hole. Great matchups there. Well, that certainly is a, a better scrum effort from the South Africans following those changes. Maya Totoga there just juggling the ball. And those changes seem to be making a very slight impact already. Well, the second scrum in which South Africa have gone forward. And bearing in mind the previous five, they've been in retreat. Yes, the changes have worked, so credit to the South African management for changing them. More space, more space. Keep the gap, keep the gap. Thank you. Well, the pressure really on the Barbarians from this position. Really nice place for a South African scrum. Not to be free kick taken then by Hunt. Naopu, Maita Toga, big hit coming in there by Mabenge. Thank you. Here comes Corsa. Lloyd. Wonderful handoffs. Unable to take that one. Sucked up by the South Africans. Tose wants to get rid of it, wants a little bit more territory. Not to be for Levy. Well, one of the South African players was having a little bit of treatment on the field. I think it was a. This huge hit that came in by Mabenge. Well, they were looking at that as a potential foul play incident, but nothing in it. Mabenge, who plays uh, rugby for Eastern Province Queens, made a debut in 2019 against Scotland. They're very active out there. Don't move. Yeah, thank you. Yep. I just want to know what happened to that. Does it have to go that again? Nothing, nothing to you. So, yeah, was it, that, too much movement on the side of the previous scrum stay before the throw in. Yep. Thank you. Let's go. So, that was Cindy Boy just talking to our referee, checking what the free kick was for last time. Clara Munnery unhappy with the movement from South Africa before the ball was placed in. Crouch! Gathered at the base there by Silon C. Play on, play on. Stolen by Capeless. Hunt. Rogers places it back then for Hunt. Some difficult passes occasionally that both sides are passing to their fellow teammates. Everyone having to really work for their ball. Penalty advantage, Barbarians. Roll 12. Roll 12. Hunt's thinking about it. She's thinking. I didn't think she was going to get away with that one, and she did not. She'll be fuming. She'll be so annoyed at herself. A lot of these penalties that have been given away, you can see that they're, they're trapped under so many bodies. She's trying to dig it out. She's trying to find the ball as quickly as possible. 
again just picks her head up, I think, doesn't she? She's so, got such good intent about her, wants to play quickly, consistently and constantly throughout the game. And, of course, there's a lot of pressure on these women here. They weren't expecting to be playing today at 2.30. They were expecting this match to be at 5.15. They've only had a few hours preparation that they had to really get Sorry. themselves ready. Half the South African team didn't get here until half an hour before the kickoff because they couldn't get here with the rest of their teammates. They came in taxis. Yeah, there was a bit of a scramble for the Barbarians. Favourites. And here comes Hunt. She's stolen it. She wants it. Yeah, she really has. That's the smile we want to see from her. Unfortunate, she'll have wanted to have made up for that, that quick tap mistake that she made. Just gets herself in that passing lane. Really, really smart play from her. It's what experienced, clever nines do. They get themselves where they think the ball's going to go. And she's got a fair bit of toe in order to finish it off as well. Fantastic from her. When you're talking about what's coming, both these teams have managed to stay within the heavy bubbles and given us a game as well. It's worth mentioning that Natasha Hunt's club side lost to Hartbury, uh, taking on Saracens at the moment. She's been given special permission to be here. And so far, with that scoreline, it's looking like a pretty good afternoon. This will be the last thing that we see of this first half. Six tries of fun. South Africa have got a big 40 minutes ahead of them, but those changes that they brought on do seem to have made a little bit of a difference. The half-time score then at Twickenham. It is the Barbarians 38, South Africa nil. Yeah, it's been a really entertaining first half, as you would expect, in a Barbarians match. Six tries, 38 points to nil, and a really strong, strong start from this international Barbarians side. South Africa haven't played an awful lot of rugby of late. It'll be interesting to see if they can work their way back into the second half. But at the moment, the Barbarians women are very much in control after what has been a pretty unusual afternoon here at Twickenham. And one of the real stars that we knew before she started that she would be a real star is Katie daly McLean. You do not get over 100 caps for your country, win eight Six Nations titles and captain a side to a Rugby World Cup victory if you're not that good. But sadly for her, it is her, um, her swan song today. It's incredible to think that she's bowing out because she is playing with such style. Um, it, it just is testament to, to what a quality player that she really is. Yeah, I actually, I saw her the other day. She told me she's retired, but then the barbars come knocking and I think you, uh, you lace up again. But getting the old band back together again with Mo and uh, Katie there, they've really dictated to the South African side how this barbars team's played. I genuinely feel that the Barbars team look more organised and that's probably down to your 9 and 10 pairing there. Good experience together, playing together, good amount of caps amongst them. They're looking like an experienced team out there, whereas South Africa, they're, they're, they're on their fourth game in a row, they're looking a little bit disjointed. So no doubt the Barbars has been successful down to Mo and Katie driving that. It is incredible, Mike, to think as well that this match, you know, should still have been a couple of hours ago. If you've just tuned in, you might be wondering when the where the men's barbarians are. They've had six cases of COVID in their camp, so that match is off. But, you know, despite the fact they turned up in taxis, despite the fact they played a few hours earlier, it's been an entertaining first half. No, it is. Um, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to coach um, Darlington Road and Park women, and, and Katie was a big part of that. Uh, the seasons I was there, uh, that crossfield kick, yep. I'd, I'd seen it in training and, and games. Uh, but she's, you know, really showed um, a lot of experience with the young kids that were, uh, young girls that were playing there. And she's doing it out here as well, just keeping, you know, keeping everything ticking over and 
putting them in the right places. Yeah, a great player, a great coach. Um, you mentioned that cross-field kick. We can have a look at some of her best bits. And it's hard to pick because there have been plenty, but she just reads the game so well, Mike. She does. You know, uh, um, she's always the student of, of the game, you know, thought really deeply about what she was doing. And, um, That's the kick always, we were talking about there. Yeah, always wanting to, to get better. Um, so I know she's only, you know, She's over 100 caps, but she could have had so many more. You know, I think she's she probably is still good for a, for a, for another year. I don't, and, know, I don't know why she's hanging the boots up. <laughs> and it's not just creating tries, Dylan. You know, great to see her in the end of one as well. Yeah, I mean, she'll be happy with that. I mean, she's continued to score them at, or, or kick from that corner there, and she missed the first one. So I think she should get a bit of kicking practice in. But um, no, I think fly halves, as they get older, more mature, they become better. Um, it's a bit like a front row forward. The, the older we get, the slower we get, the better and gnarlier we get. It's a bit like a fly half. You can see she's got time on the ball. Things like the crossfield kick, that's not a last minute decision. She's got her head up, she's scanning, she sees the space. It's an easy decision because the space is there and they've got width on their attack as well. So yeah, she's dictating how this team are playing today very, very well. Uh, and you mentioned that half-back pairing and Mo Hunt alongside her, who you've been in the commentary box with of late. Great to see her doing what she's doing because she's doing it pretty well. Yeah, I'm going to be kind to Mo because next time I see her, I might be sat next to her. <laughs> no, no, but she, she's driving the tempo of this like any good, I suppose, ratty nine. I call all nines ratty because they're annoying. But like any nine, she's driving the tempo, a few quick taps. She's had a couple of little errors, but she's bounced back. Um, she's... She basically reads the game well, and like I said, your nine is usually the heartbeat of your team, and she's making this thing tick for them today. And I love the little NFL Barbar style sort of play. Um, whilst it looked great, there was zero deception in it, but it looked fun, <laughs> which is what the Barbar is all about. Got the ball in Mo's hands early, and then you know a couple of phases later they, they, they score, which is brilliant. And she seems to be thriving with this leadership role as well. Yes, um, you know, obviously the experience she's had with the Simmons uh, has has. Um, really paid off for her today um, so, you know she's she's fast she's skillful and you know she's tough so she's leading from the front yeah you, you mentioned sevens and uh, Sarah Levy who's one of the wingers is, is one of the, the real stars of the USA seven circuit but there seems to be a lot of speed on both wings at uh, Rona Lloyd the only Scott involved she now plies her trade over in France, she said to to move away to be able to do that. But they have got some lightning quick wingers out there. Well, I want to see Namba from South Africa get the ball because defensively she's been smacking a few people, which is brilliant to see. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see her get the ball. There's pointless having a winger of that calibre and yep. not getting her the ball. So I'd like to see her maybe a bit like Manu Tuolagi, come looking for the ball off rucks, maybe take it off set piece, off scrum, off line out, if they can turn up their line out. Um, quite interesting though, they brought on the bomb squad. <laughs> The South Africa bomb squad came on and um, you know they've got a little bit more parity at set piece now they're not getting dominated as much so I'm, I'm hoping South Africa can come out get some cleaner set piece and get people like Namba into the game but as you say they've got to get their hands on the ball and that's something the Barbarians have been doing and when their wingers got their hands on the ball Rona Lloyd and Sarah Levy you know they didn't need to be asked twice no um, and, and Katie knows that you know with with all that pace out there, you know, why, why would she want to be doing too much? So hold the width, get the ball out there, and they've got a good skill set to do that. You know, um, so, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we'll see more of it in the second half as well. I'm sure the South African defence coach is probably pulling his uh, hair out or her hair out there because, you know, offset piece, that is when you're your most organised, you're calm, everything's structured, you can see and, and what's in front of you. So to, to score a first phase try is credit to the Barbars, but I think South Africa will be looking at their defence pretty sharply there. Yeah, absolutely. We saw Rona Lloyd going over for her try. Uh, Sarah Levy also went over for her second, and she is lightning quick, as I say. She uh, is a real star of the USA 7 circuit, and uh, we'll see how long she stays on, because it's really interesting. They want to, um, they want to bring on uh, their own version of the bomb squad. Some great talent on the bench as well, and, and these girls will be desperate to get their chance. Oh, I've got to give a shout-out to old, old Rocky Clark, the grandma. <laughs> she, you know... I was going to say, she's got a hundred and something, uh, she's got the most cap player for, for England rugby ever. So to bring the calibre of Rocky Clark on, again, I thought she had retired. It's funny when the Barbars can, I, I mean, I did bring my boots today in, in, in hope. But um, no, equally, you know, both, you know, 
the, the Barbars are going to empty their bench as well. And I can only imagine the tempo of the game goes up. I think the only concern is when the scoreboard is what it is, yeah. you can be tempted into playing probably a bit too loosely. And then we get a stop-start scrappy game. Offload is not going to hand to floor, knock on. And then we, we get a slow game. So I think the challenge for the bench is to retain that sort of enthusiasm that they've had in that first half, but to be clinical with it. Yeah, nobody knows when they're coming off. So they're all desperate to get a try. And just before halftime, it was Mo Hunt who went over for her try, uh, taking the scoreline up towards that 38 nil just before Katie Dylan McLean took her uh, kick. But a, a great break. We've seen a lot of great breaks from Mo. I was going to say, Mo will be happy with that one because the last one that she had from about 80 metres out, she didn't have the legs to make it. So 30, 40 metres is, is obviously in range for Mo. And just before that, she would knocked the ball on. So redemption <laughs> for Mo Hunt there. I'm sure she'll be smiling. There were some big sort of NFL-style moments. There was a groan from the crowd. Actually, a groan from you guys as well when a hit went in. You could sort of feel it reverberating around this entire stadium. That's, um is it There's one of the their moves from, one of uh, oh, this was a good iron hit um, I mean I enjoy this I really do enjoy this but I mean in terms of deception there's nothing there but it's fun it's <laughs> no. what the bar bar is all about they play to the width there was that's Amber yeah, she, yeah she's been throwing it about today and then on the way back we, we score in the other corner so yeah it's, that's what bar bar is all about a bit of fun no pressure I mean let's get it back in the um, in, in test rugby why not <laughs> Uh, Giants, thank you very much for the moment. How is your sports knowledge? Do you think you can do better than this bunch? Question of Sport is back with a brand new horse, brand new team captains. <laughs> I'm going to go for the Broncos. Yes, come on! But still the same great laughs and sporting insight. We are surrounded by greatness. Let the games begin. Oh. Question of Sport. Press red to watch on iPlayer. And we've got plenty of live sports too. too. Starting tomorrow, you can have a live round every week from the Premier 15s. You can see Bristol against Wasps 2.15. That's on the BBC iPlayer and online. And if you fancy catching up on all the rugby news and views with Chris Jones, Hugo Monia and Danny Kerr, you can listen to Rugby Union Weekly, available on the BBC Sounds every Tuesday. And of course, the next international rugby is the Six Nations with coverage across the BBC from Saturday, the 5th of February. We cannot wait for that one. Now, one of the most famous names when it comes to rugby commentary, who also played for the Barbarians, is Nigel Starmer-Smith. Now, sadly, Nigel is suffering from dementia. His son, Charlie, hopes that this story and his own musical tribute will help put a light on the illness, and he's been speaking to James Burridge. For Charlie Starmer smith life now means weekly visits to his father, Nigel, in his care home. come to see dad for the best part of four years now and I think every time I walk through the gates you're reminded that you know this isn't the, the man you knew and the, the vibrant guy you've grown up with. Nigel Stummer Smith was a tenacious scrum half for England in the early 70s. This is Shackleton, tackled by Bates, get it inside to Stummer Smith, over the 25, this is Bucknell, a great move by England, Lachter to Fairbrother, Lachter must score! He used his playing experience to bring rugby into our homes. I'm here in Liverpool for the exciting second round tie in the John Player Cup. Today, dementia has denied Nigel the ability to recognise his own words. Blanco on the counter attack. This is typical adventure. Philippe Sella. And notice how the backs anticipate this great interplay to Combarabero. Unsettling England and Combarabero has recovered it, sees the man galloping up. It's Saint Andre, it depends on the bounce, and he's under the post. One of the most sensational tries Twickenham's ever seen. Dad certainly uh, played in the era of the magic sponge, and you get knocked out, and that's a badge of honour, and back on the pitch you go. But we have dementia in the family as well. Uh, my dad's brother, who, you know, wasn't a rugby player, he died from, from, from the, the disease as well. I take his hand, it's so cold to touch. Not like the man and the father I miss so much. As lockdown stopped all visiting, it was mum who encouraged Charlie to express his feelings in a song. Spotlight is out now, 
with all the proceeds going to the Alzheimer's Society. If this song can help raise awareness of this issue, and I think the, the dementia issue is a big one in sport, um, I'm not going to profess to have all the answers as to what the connections are, but clearly there's something that needs to be investigated, particularly in contact sports. If I can do my small bit through, through a song, it would be amazing, and it would be a great positive legacy that is obviously about my dad, but I feel very much connected to through my mum as well. Yeah, we're certainly sending our best to Nigel, to the family, and also to, to anyone who's affected by this terrible disease. Okay, let's head back down pitch side because Joe Yap, the Barbarians coach, is with Sonia. Well, Joe, great first 40 from the Barbarians. Just first of all, we know how good they are in terms of Katie Daly McLean and uh, Mo Hunt, but how, how pleased with how your halfbacks are giving you some control? Yeah, no, we're really proud of um, the whole squad so far. Uh, yeah, like you say, uh, Katie and Mo are used to playing together, and you can see that in the way they're performing in that first half. Now, you've got some quite real talent on the bench to come, like some Rocky Clarks down yeah. there. I mean. Dylan Hartley has been talking about how yeah. he's looking forward to seeing her. Have you got it in mind that you're going to make changes or yeah. are you just going to wait and see how this unfolds? No, we've, we've got some planned changes, providing everything still goes to plan. It's important that everyone gets an opportunity to be on the field today. Yeah, and what have you made so far of the, the opposition here in terms of, of what the South African women have been able to bring? Yeah, it's, it's kind of what we expected. They're hugely physical, aren't they? And when we get it wrong, you know, the girls feel the hits. So we just got to make sure we're just trying to play around that or through it and not, because when, when they hit us, the girls are feeling those hits, which is they're a hugely physical side and they're not going to lie down. Are you feeling the enjoyment? The crowd are loving this. Yeah, it's absolutely awesome. And I'm so pleased for the girls that they get to, to run out in front of all these people and that they've stayed and they've supported the women. It's fantastic. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Well, the teams are back out on the pitch. We're expecting plenty more tries, so let's head back up to commentary to Brian Moore, Emily Scarrett and Sarah Orchard. Right then, another 40 to go. South Africa have made more changes as they will try and make a dent on that scoreline after they really have been overpowered in that first 40 by the Barbars. That's off a foot. Hunt passes off the ball. Griffin fancies a run. Back down the bar bars line. Naopu. What is out? Washington. <laughs> An integral part of the uh, USA side right stop, now. Stop. On the end of a bit of a thumping against England last week at Worcester. Running take there by Dunker. Made her debut back in 2018 against Wales for South Africa. Now it's Charlie. Long pass there by Jordan. Manages to find Carway. Loose ball. In the end, a little bit of work for Webb. Tose again, manages to go to Lacha. Bit of a spin there from Charlie again. Tackle, thank you. They're holding on to the ball for longer periods here, South Africa. Slight juggle though, as I curse them. Rogers. Hunt finds Pete. Daly McLean. A little bit of chaos out there. No one owning their possession for the time being. Jordan. Once again, it's Carway. Nice hack on. Big hit going on there afterwards. Popped off ball. Mistake there by the Barbars. Here's the opportunity. It's the replacement who comes on. They're still chasing the ball. The woman that was there was Umkat Shulwa, but couldn't finish. It's a brilliant break by Carway in the first place. Just that delayed pass from Jordan on the shoulder. She's hiding okay, in behind. Yeah. Brilliant break from her. Support not quite with her, so she decides to put boot to ball. Massive shot after the tackle, after the kick as well. That's really immediately better from South Africa this half. 
They've got defined runners taking the ball over the game line. In the first half, it was very much making it up and see where we go. This time round, you've seen several pods, you've seen two or three players mandated to take the ball over the game line. That course gives them focus so they can get back round and then replay. South Africa with a scrum. They struggled in the first half, but they made a few changes to their front row. If you missed it, it seems to have made quite a difference. Find! Set! To say, needs to get that one out. The Barbars are coming and they get the penalty. Hunt is off. Electric from the number nine. Griffin, capeless. Hunt manages to find Paquin. Corson. Rogers, bouncing ball. This is backwards from the bar bar. South Africa are coming. Murphy, was that a little knock on on the floor? Warning there to the bar bars. Big opportunity for the South Africans. Tell you what, these South Africans don't half hit hard, do they? I think Dylan picked it up at half time, but Cowway again there, just a massive Point. shot as Jenny Murphy's trying Point. to retrieve the, the bobbling ball, just dislodges it and gives them the opportunity to turn the ball over. And look, <laughs> the, the crowd aren't happy about the decision to, to take the three points, but for this South African side, not seeing a zero next to their name is incredibly important. There, yep. Well, here we see the barbarians yeah, suffering a little fine. bit. In the way that South Africa did, as soon as the ball goes wrong, as soon as you go, the first person, kill it, stand up, and let everyone regroup round you. If you try to pass it backwards, it never, never gets better. Zene Jordan, then 30 years old, vice captain for South Africa this afternoon. Her first chance to get some points on the board for the Springboks. frustration for the visitors. Yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? Zane Jordan is probably the most experienced player on this South African squad. And I don't know if we can see that or not, but that is a textbook spiral old school kick out of the, the 22 there from Natasha Hunt. Fantastic clearance kick from her. Crouch! Well, somehow the Barbars have survived that. Well, this scrum is tit for tat each time, but Barbar's come away with it. McLean with that right boot. Wonderful take by Mabenge. Webb is there. One of the more experienced players for South Africa in that back line. Still only a handful of caps. Stay on! Shaking back! Well, that's come out on the near side, but uh, oh, Barbars have taken it. They could have brought that one back because South Africa had taken it back into their 22. Footwork from Lloyd means she still travels. Someone's got to tackle it. to the far side. They've got numbers there, the bar bars. Naopu passes that to Mattia Toga. Once again, it's Carway with the tackle. Corson. Hunt. Daly McLean with a nice little up and over. South Africa will have to touch down. Scrum five. Kicking back. Well, referee says that's been taken back by South Africa. And so the Barbars get the scrum. Well, it was taken back, but it was well covered. 
Ja, ja, ja. Wasn't really much of a choice that South Africa could do in that position. Of course, if it had been the Barbars that had taken it over that line, it would have been a goal line dropout. Still no points in this second half. Is this the moment? Play the ball, advantage call. Daly McLean with the crossfield special. Waiting underneath it is Levy. She can't take. No advantage. Collapse. You could see it just as that scrum was uh, packing down. Katie Daly McLean was waving at, at Levy to get herself out into that five metre channel. Three wants it brought back. Let me sign the mark. I don't know if she's managed to hurt herself there. Hope Rogers in the process there. Ice immediately applied to the hip. I don't know how much ice you'd want on a day like this, Brian. Let me sign the mark, please. I know, I know. It's a lot different when you're playing the front row, let me tell you. You're never called. Ice, of course, being provided by Joe McGilchrist, World Cup winner with England. Um, amazing to see that kind of that circle of life, if you like, with the Barbarians. Uh, uh, you know, she was a phenomenal player, qualified physio, able to come back in a different capacity and support the girls. Are you okay? Yep. Hope Rogers, an inter incredibly talented player. She's wearing three today. She was playing at Loosehead last week for the USA. Did a bit of track and field in high school, bit of shot and discus. Now rugby is certainly her sport. Ontario's Laura Russell. Her sister Kelly Russell, another 50 capper for uh, Canada has previously paid for the Barbarians. It's now her younger sister's turn. We haven't seen a rolling more like this. That looks good. That looks down and over. And the Barbars get the first score of the second half. And it looks like it is Lindsay Peet of Ireland. Her club side railway union, represented by her socks, of course, goes over. Well, Russell doing her job. Hit the jumper at the height of the take. The important thing for the Barbarians, get it set first. Get the players in position before you go forward, before you start to take momentum and then everything else follows. South Africans just cannot get arms in there. I think Lindsay Pete as well is lining up for this conversion. I think it might be because this might be the last time we see Thank Lindsay you. Pete on international duty. And that will be why she is a prop and not a kicker. I mean, this is proper bar bar stuff. I think it's anyone who puts up the hand now. You can do whatever you like. Joe Yap with a smile on her face there. What an afternoon for Joe Yap, the bar bar's head coach. The former England captain herself. She's currently in charge of the Worcester Warriors women. As we see coming off the field of play there, Lindsay Pete. What an innings. Also coming off there, Washington and Murphy. Some pretty special names have just come on, though, for the Bale Barons. You get to see Rocky Clark, the most capped England player of all time, male or female, onto the field. Also, Sonia Green, a bit of a legend of the club game in England, made over 300 appearances now for Saracens. The ball goes out round to the far side. See, Morgan Perrinet is also on. Laura Russell there, just getting ready. And Rocky Clark, she said she's happy to keep playing. She now plays her rugby at Saracens. So she'll keep playing as long as her body allows and she still enjoys it. She's not the oldest in this squad, though. That honour does go to Lindsay Pete. Go 
Rocky Clark celebrated her 40th birthday by playing in the Premier 15's final the day after earlier this year. Saracens losing on that day to Harlequins women. Here come the Barbars again. Levy. And Hunt is gone. Clark. Advantage as well now. It's not quick ball. Hunt doesn't want it if it's not fast. Off again. You'd think South Africa might be a little bit alive to Hunt by now. On the far side, it's going to be taken by Griffin! Oh! All the tricks coming out now! Play advantage. Paquin. Capeless is there. Still Capeless. Clark. Back. Round the corner. Griffin wants it. Oh, she can see the line. She knows it's there. Well, they're bundled over, but if it's held up, it'll be South Africa ball. Come back. Come back. But they're playing advantage. On the line, on the line. On the line. Hunt is there. Sniffing an opportunity. Well, Barbars are essentially playing at the moment with just 14 women because they've got someone down on the near side by the technical area at the moment. It is uh, Hope Rogers. She did take that big hit with her hip. And coming onto the field now is Bristol Simipan. She's a real tatters woman, we have to say across women's rugby. Not capped yet by England, but has spoken about her ambitions to head in that direction. She's also a qualified doctor, has been heavily involved on the front line throughout the pandemic, having only just qualified. She was brought in very fast, and uh, she's a wonderful character for the game. Yeah, she is, and a fantastic player as well. She thinks she's got a few highlights reels on um, on YouTube that people can go and check out, because she certainly doesn't take many backward steps. But can we just talk about that Cara Griffin chip and chase? It was <laughs> sensational. I think she's she's also ending her rugby career um, today. So, you know, she obviously doesn't want to leave this field and leave this opportunity with, with any regrets. And she can now add a successful chip and chase to her list. Collected at the base by the South Africans. What a great handoff there. They're still moving. Speed bump tackle coming in by Mattia Toga. This time taken forward by Jacobs. South Africa have done well to get out of that real danger zone. No scrum half at the moment. Umka Sholwa has to go in and play. Slightly shank ball there to try and clear. But offside. Offside. 16 offside. She's going. There she goes. Well, that's going to be a big dent to South Africa. It's not just the fact it's a yellow card, it's the player it's been given to as well. Carway has really been instrumental for them. And here we go. Another Barbar -bar special. sure what they're trying to achieve but uh, we're enjoying it as Nova gives it out to the near side it's going to be Levy over once again that's a hat trick for the American happy faces in southwest London enjoying everything that the Barbars have to offer look the, the wall the wall the NFL star really did nothing to the defense did it but seeing as they scored off it it means we'll be seeing it on all the highlight highlights reels just a bit of fanfare there out of the back. Then just really simple hands. I've identified there's a, um, a shortage of South African defenders on that open side. Just good skills. Love to see it. Crisp hands along that back line. Sunny Napu, fantastic hands. And 
Levy, is that her hat trick? Yes, I think uh, good hands, but also a good line by Katie Daly McLean, making sure she stayed straight, keeping all the South African inside defenders honest, not able to drift off her. Good afternoon so far for Sarah Levy as uh, Katie Daly McLean has the opportunity to line up the half century. Not yet. We did notice at half time that quite a few of the uh, families of the uh, Barbars women who play here in the UK did start arriving here. Of course, they were expecting them to play at 5 15, so they missed this on the first occasion in the first half. The NFL moves. I'd love to know where all the inspirations have come from this week. Do you think all the USA players have been teaching them these? I'm sure they have. I just can't believe that Rocky Clark hasn't pulled rank with a 130-something international caps and she was the one rolling around on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> we say, of course, that Rocky Clark has 137 caps. The current England captain, Sarah Hunter, now up to 130. As the Barbars just knock on the ball there, you'd think that uh, Sarah Hunter over the next year could well overtake her if she remains uninjured and the build-up towards that World Cup. There you go, 2014 World Cup winner, Rocky Clark there in the middle of your screen with the blue scrum cap on. More changes then for the South Africans. Big mention also coming on there, number 21, Romandi Potterita. First time she gets to come on on this tour. Plays for the Delta Drone Tux. Remember, there are just 14 women out there at the moment, the South Africans. Namba. Good support flying in there by Latcher. Webb having to play scrum half. First touch of the ball there by Snyders, but Simi Pam just pushing the South Africans back there in the tackle. Snyders again. Busy since she's come on. Oh, that was a, a tricky one to take for Jacobs, and they're just losing ground here, the South Africans. It would be wonderful for them if they could make some kind of dent on that scoreboard. <laughs> wonderful contest the Barbars are making of every ruck here, just not giving the South Africans any quick ball at all. Look at that by Griffin. Somehow the South Africans they hold on, bench. stolen by Naopu. is over. Hunt sends it up, nice bounce of the ball, but the woman underneath it is none other than Charlie. It was quite apparent is the yep. pleasure that the Barbarians are getting from yes. their experience with each other, Eight. playing with players that they wouldn't Eight. ordinarily get the opportunity to do Eight. so, Eight. the style yeah. of rugby that they're able to play. And you can see both of them, yeah. all the players are coming on and off, really enjoying the experience. There's a couple of changes here, but the television match official has been called in. So there's just going to be a pause here as the referee, Clara Munnery, speaks to Stefano Penne. Well, it's Linda Loka Guala going up against uh, Kira Griffin. They might be looking at her arm in that contact. Well, they are looking at an elbow connection to the face. To be honest, I would show you another angle. She had so, so little time before she was under pressure. I'm not really sure. Okay. Not something and nothing for me. It's one of those things yes, also when it's slowed down, it the best one, I think. can show quite a different picture. Um, 
Elbow on the neck, low degree of danger, no force. I think it's just a penalty against 16 white. Well, at the moment, it sounds like a penalty. Are you considering the elbow directly to the neck with the low force? Yeah, for me, it's low force. So uh, I think it's just a penalty against 16 white. OK. Thank you. Penalty, yeah. Well, it's just a penalty yeah. against Captain. Linda Loka Guala. You could see Cindy Bowie there Thank just uh, looking after her player. Captain, Captain, Woo. Captain, Captain, sorry, sorry, Captain, Cindy. Captain, sorry, it's just a penalty. Elbow on the neck, you're 16, number 16. Just a penalty. There's a big focus at the moment in South Africa on uh, Cindy Bowie. She's 36 years old now, hoping that she'll keep going to the World Cup. A real leader for them, as we get to see first time on the ball there for Morgan Peronet. Big hand there going in from Corson. Hunt thinks there's space there, almost ran into her own player. Play continues for Paco. Still Corson. South Africans trying to hold up the ball there. Corson does wrestle that to the floor. Clark. Well, there's Daly McLean to Pam. Popped off ball, Russell. Well, South Africa have suffered from the fact that individually up front they're just not as good or as powerful as their counterparts for the Barbarians, and now the Barbarians are starting to get some familiarity. The result is obviously aggregate is much more, and they are playing with much more fluency. They're playing with purpose. With a little help from your friend, wasn't it, Sonia Green? So good at that, just the leg drive. But such an amazing occasion for somebody like Simi Pam. Obviously, she's not capped. She won't have been on a stage like this before. She's been very kind of vocal on her social media about how much this week has meant to her. She shed a few tears, I think, when she received her shirt last night or the night before. So fantastic occasions for players like this. Daily McLean then with the extras. Worth mentioning uh, one of the socks that Simi Pam is wearing today. Of course, the Barbars can choose their socks. It's normally just club socks, but actually she's chosen to wear one sock from the, the Black Girls Rock podcast. Such what it means to her to be representing and showing black women what can be achieved in rugby union. with the restart then for South Africa. Bit of a bobble ball there by uh, Bombardier, Beth and Dayton on the field. Welsh woman who plays for the British Army. There, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> I think she knew what was running towards her. Good scrum by the South Africans, that's what it's about. Webb there, nice little dummy from her. She manages to find the force that is Namba. She was well marshalled. It's a great shame we haven't seen more of Namba with the ball in her hands. She's obviously a very powerful runner. 
capable of doing damage. Unfortunately, she just hasn't been able to. Well, she's not been supplied with anything. Well, Namba only made her debut against Wales two weeks ago. Still very fresh to international rugby. 29,000 packed into Twickenham to watch this one. For Sarita. Has to be Bui, has to go in and play scrum half. And catch Charlotte. Was out, was out. For Tarita again, manages to find Snyders. For Tarita again. Good run there by Charlie. Yes, it's over. Again, good runs there by Mazi Bukwana. Snyder's again. She's taken on a lot of ball. Jacobs now. They're securing the ball nicely here, South Africa. One of the best passages of play we've seen throughout the whole match. They're just not quite getting over that gain line. Don't forget, they've only got 14 women out there. That's Simbin Nilia. He's out. Thank you. Makua. Porterita again. Snyders, he's been very influential. And Benge. In the end, they can't quite hold on to it. Just unable really to make any kind of prominent indent, weren't they? They were moving the ball well. Just weren't able to really get through this Barbaros defence. And you've got to remember there's some phenomenal international players littered across this Barbarian side, so it's never going to be an easy task. OK, coming on to the field then. We can see that Isabel Rico Vaquez is coming on. Also coming on to the field is Sammy Wong. Natasha Hunt, been a busy afternoon for her. It's been a busy week. And you can tell by that smile on her face, she's loved every single second of it. Emily Scarrett, we have to say, she's one of your best mates. She's loved this. Yeah, she really has. Uh, all week as well, I've been getting text messages and voice notes. She's absolutely loved it. And the opportunity as well to captain this side has meant an awful lot to her. Perinet getting involved as soon as she can. Wong. Pam. Worth mentioning, Sammy Wong plays her rugby at WAS, another uncapped player, a New Zealander. Naopu. Turns out, you just saw Mason there with that pass of the ball. Oh, did they just keep that in? No. See on the near side, our, our touch judge is uh, Sarah Cox of England. She was the first woman to referee a men's premiership match earlier this season. No doubt many more to come. Confirmation that Kira Griffin is uh, the captain for the Bar Bars now. Oh, tequila, how much of that have they had this week? Not as much as the men, by all accounts. No comment. Right then, they are ready to get back underway then with the scrum. There you go. They know every time they're on the screen now. This is the fifth time the women's barbarians have played. They first stepped out against Munster back in November 2017 with a 19-0 win. They've also beaten the British Army, had a very tight match against the USA. The only time they lost was here at Twickenham against England back in June 2019. It looks like they're in for another strong win. No advantage. Come back. I can just see the lack of 
maybe match yep. preparation or familiarity with South Africa. They're waiting for the deep ball for the winger there to try and hit the edge. When it came, she was just slightly late, which meant the ball wasn't on. They had to take the ball into contact where they didn't want to, and everything fell apart. Yeah, they've definitely got lots of things that they can look at this South African side, obviously building towards that World Cup. What I would say from what I've seen today is they've got some phenomenal talent and a lot of raw potential. Um, and I think that's really exciting for a side that are very, very new. They have a low number of caps. They've not played much together. Um, and I think they've got an exciting 10, 11 months ahead of them. Well, you might have seen some perhaps slightly frustrated faces there from the South Africa coaches. As we say, they, they are still building at the moment. They brought in Lynn Cantwell, Ireland's uh, most capped player, to come in as their women's high performance manager. She's not long been in the role, but she is contracted until 2024. And you do feel that things are starting to change. Griffin. South Africa want to go, not happy to hang around. Dunker. Passed off ball this time by Unka. Schwala manages to find Guala. Well, South Africa now back up to 15 players. They've had plenty of possession, just not quite been able to finish anything off. Think about the big pass, not on this occasion there from Snyders. The appeal's just going to the referee there. What is available? For Trita. Look at Schwala, she has been everywhere coming off the bench. She plays for Western Province. Okay, here's a free shot then for the South Africans. Can they make it count? Malinga. Still Malinga, is there space down there? Can South Africa go over? Ooh. Oh, Malinga, the whole of Twickenham wanted that for you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. They're going to go and have a look. Yes, Clara. Okay, all for the season is touch line. Okay. Please check if the ball okay. did the grounding before. On field, decision, on field decision, no try. No try on field decision, yes. Okay. Thank you. She didn't have the face of someone on the ground that looked like she'd just okay, scored a wonder right. try at Twickenham, did she? So I'm not sure we'll see much conclusive evidence to overturn that here, but fantastic feat and fantastic effort from her to get around that outside. No, unfortunately not. What she needs to do there is when she sees the defender coming across, take a step into her, so that when the contact comes, she's got momentum that's sending her infield, rather than just accepting the hit. Well, it's Katie Mason who flew across there with that try-saving tackle. A warning there for the bar bars for that high tackle. And South Africa are going to dot this one over to the corner to try and see if they can do something from a lineup. Probably the best spell, one of the best spells they've had, isn't it, in terms of possession? Dumke's been very good. She had a double play earlier, got on her feet, turned the ball over, quick tap. Oh, taken on the fingertips there by Charlie. No one wants to be nailed. Twickenham want them to try and push this for everything. It's well stopped by the Barbars. What is there? Yes. Snyders. Good ball in the end to Carway. Trying to make up for that yellow card. Snyders again. Managed to find Malinga. You have to credit this Barbar's defence, don't you? Namba. Oh, 
Snyder's just finding heavy traffic wherever that she goes. Mabenge. Does well there while she's being tackled to get the extra metres. The opportunity flying through there was Jacobs. Portrita comes back. They've got space out there, but the barbars just arrive in floods. Use it. Portrita doesn't know which way to go. Can't quite take the ball. Such frustration after a wonderful passage of play by South Africa. Such a shame. Such a shame. They just weren't able to take a deep breath, keep some composure, patience. Trying to throw the worldie to the edge. Yeah, really frustrating from a South African point of view. But they're the crucial lessons that they'll learn as they continue to develop as this side. One of the impressive things about the Barbarians this afternoon is their commitment to the physical contact areas because one of the things you usually question with a barbarian side is how much they're really up for it. Thank you. Well, you couldn't see Jo yet, yeah, but alongside her was Rachel Taylor, former Wales captain. They've uh, teamed up before for the Barbars. And uh, Rachel Taylor currently one of the coaches up at Sail Sharks Women. Eventually, that does come away to Katie Daly McLean. Still in the field of play. Webb thinks about support. Decides to take on the hit herself. Snyders. Here comes Makua. Oh, wonderful take in the end by Malinga. She's still going! Refused to go down. Refused to take the tackle. It's great play, isn't it? Somebody just fighting through, offload, and then she just backs herself. She gives herself an opportunity, and that's what I was talking about earlier. This South African side has got potential because it's got players like that with phenomenal athletic ability who will just put their head down and keep going. So it's a brilliant finish. She didn't quite get the one a couple of minutes ago, did she? But she wasn't going to be denied a second time. You've seen the individual efforts and the athleticism and dexterity of some of the South African players. What's let them down this afternoon is simply organisation familiarity, not being able to get enough quick ball to give those sort of runners the chances that they obviously thrive on. World-class stuff then by Malinga. Closing in oh, on the end yeah. of the match. And that also means we're closing in on the end of a couple of rugby careers. Still on the field for the Barbarians, of course, Katie Daly McLean and Kira Griffin. Dunker took it in and Snyders gets it back, moving in to Guala. Sharks woman. Use it. Webb, who's standing in that first receiver position, who feeds to Jacobs. Katha Jacobs is meant to be staying in the UK to try and get a bit of a playing time with London Irish. It's not quite been signed off yet, but she's hoping to stay for around four months, play her rugby in the Premier 15s. And if you do like your Premier 15s rugby, don't forget that tomorrow you can watch Bristol Bears women taking on Wasps on the BBC iPlayer. That one gets underway at 2.30. On from white. Next scrum. Thank you. Well, they're just going to line up a scrum. Just like to give a word for Katie Daly McLean. If it is the last time, we will have a see her in anger on a pitch. What a fantastic servant and player she has been to the game. 
comes Wong. Wong is still there and calling for it. Corson. Oh, you feel the bar bars have got something here. Naopu. Here comes Lloyd. Just those last connections, just not coming off at the moment. They'll come back for the penalty, though. On the line, on the line. Shout out to Lenny Corso as well. As a French forward, I think she's been exemplary in this game. A huge amount of work, probably not appreciated by most people, but she's been the, uh, the heart of, of a lot of things that the Barbarians have done well. Pak Wing still going, the Canadian, she just couldn't get that last pass away. Griffin is there, Griffin for the line, still a metre short. You can see Rico Varquez there of Spain just waiting. It was Clark who took on the ball in the end. They don't want that held up. Wong, not to be given the ball this time. They're flying over. The try is scored, and it is Kira Griffin. None less than that woman deserves. She has been through so much emotion, leading Ireland particularly after they failed to qualify for the World Cup. At the start of this autumn, she led them to victory last week against Japan. She helped lift them up really by their bootstraps whilst they were facing down the barrel of a defeat. A hugely emotional interview from her at the end of the game, thanking everyone in her family. And wonderful to see a smile on her face today. Yeah, it's an unbelievably fitting end to what has been a fabulous career for her. Um, like you say, they've, they've had some really tough times, that island side, certainly in recent years. I think she's going to take the conversion as well. Um, I don't know why she's gone so far back. I'd have gone 10 metres further forward, but potentially, you know, sh she's always held herself in the highest regard amongst other players that she's played against. Oh, just pushed it, just pushed it. Um, but a fantastic end to her career. Um, still very young, actually, so she could still play for a few more, but yeah, well done to her. Right then, we've still got a time for a kick-off, but also time to get your player of the match, Emily yeah, Scarrett. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Well, I think it had to be, didn't it? It was written today. Um, and numerous players have really put their hand up. Natasha Hunt's been very good, but that lady on your screen, Katie Daly-McLean, she scored early doors, she's kicked very well, she's been integral in lots of the tries that this Barbarian side have scored. 116 international caps for this wonderful lady, and this is her final game, so I think it's only fitting that Katie Daly-McLean is our player of the match. She bought a Barbar shirt when she was 11 years old at a time where women didn't play Barbarians rugby. She went on to a stellar career with England, leading them to the World Cup, of course, in 2014. And she said, nothing will top today. It is one last time. And she's managed to get player in the match. Crouch! Set! Have the bar bars got something special here or will they get it out? Ball goes to Wong. They want to play. Of course they want to play. They're the barbarians. The flag goes up. And that's all. Right, that is it. It's been a party from start to finish, but a black and white day at Twickenham. The final score, the Barbarians 60, South Africa 5. Thanks very much. What an unusual day we've had here at Twickenham, Villain.
Outstanding though. Silver linings. I always look for positives. We've got 30,000 people in here. I don't know what was in the tea and coffee, but there's a, a warm atmosphere. Uh, we score a dozen tries. Uh, I think it's a great advert for women's rugby today. A couple of years to World Cup here. Let's pack this place out. And from Samoa's point of view? Yeah, unfortunate for Samoa, but um, I, I really look forward to what uh, the future holds for our Pacific Island nations with uh, regulation, regulation 8. Well, it has really been an unusual day. The men's match cancelled because of COVID. The women had to get taxis here to put on a show. And after the class and culture and emotion, everybody leaves Twickenham a Samoa fan. Buffy Tai Samoa, thank you very much, Dents. Thank you very much to you at home for watching as well. Bye-bye.